Okay, to recap, we've installed the ESXi server and we've also installed the VMware vSphere client on our machine here. So now we need to configure the vSphere client to talk to the vSphere server. So I will put in the IP address that we assigned to the server. And the username was root and we didn't assign it a password. So we'll go ahead and see if we can connect to the server. A few things that you need to uh, keep in mind is uh, make sure your firewalls allow uh, the traffic in between depending on your network and how it's configured. Alright, so here we are. This is the introduction screen here. You can kind of see there's the vSphere client. This is us right now. And the servers, what we installed earlier. So this is what we're talking to and we're going to install virtual machines inside this computer. So to kind of do a, a little overview here, if you go to the virtual machine tab, you can see there's nothing in here. But if you right click in any of the white area, you can go to new virtual machine. You can also right click on the server itself and go new virtual machine. So you can also look at your resources that you have available, uh, the performance that's happening in the server, and there's a few other tabs that you can look at. I do look at this one because it keeps track of your uh, processor. Also, if you have a good server, it will keep track of your temperatures and stuff too. But anyways, let's go ahead and make a new virtual machine. Alright, so I don't have any ISO files currently on this machine to do anything with. So we're going to go custom. And we're going to say Windows 7. And yes, we're going to install it on the main hard drive. All right, since we are using VMware ESXi 5.1, we want to make sure that we choose the right setting that goes with whatever server we're running. So if you're running an older system 4.0, 4.1, uh, you go back. But uh, since we used 5.1, we'll go ahead and use that. This will be a Windows-based system and it will be Windows 7 64-bit. We're going to say we want one socket, two cores, and we'll give it, uh, let's say, four gigs of RAM. Give it a virtual NIC. That's good. Create a virtual disk inside. Very good. And we'll give it a, we'll say, a the minimum. We'll do thin provisioning. And leave the default. Now, you can click this box right here to edit any information you want before the actual uh, process begins. So we'll go ahead and click that so we can take a look at some stuff here. So here's where you can you can adjust your memory, your CPU. This is the, the one thing that I do like to look at here. Sometimes the configuration isn't set up specifically for but you can also add other devices. You can see we will have some ISO files. So I'm going to enable the USB controller. That's good. And finish. And now that we have a USB controller, we can actually add, let's see, do we got everything we need? DVD, NIC. Uh, if you want to configure your NIC, uh, you can do so in here. If you've set up different uh, network con connections within uh, uh, your server, then this is where you would change. So you could have, it's kind of like setting up virtual VLANs. And I think we're looking pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and hit finish. And you can see right there, our Windows 7 machine is there. If we power it on, okay, it's now on. Go to console. You'll actually see the computer 
starting up. But since we don't have an ISO file attached to it, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to kind of sit there and say, hey, there's no operating system. What do you want to do? So what you can do, there's a couple different things we can do here, actually. So let's go ahead and stop. Yep. And we are going to edit the settings again. And the CD drive right here, we're going to say at host. What this does is on the physical server, this will use the physical CD drive on the server itself. Connect the power up. That way you can stick an ISO file or an IO, a disk that has an ISO file on it in the drive and it will go ahead and boot that ISO file. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now I'm not going to continue from there, but that's a, a look at it. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and make another one. This time we'll use typical. We'll call this Linux. Next, Linux. Uh, let's just say we're going to use um, an Ubuntu kernel. Yep. Good, good. There it is. Let's go ahead and edit the settings again. Make sure it's connecting to the host device. Let's see, CPU socket memory. All right. So this is going to be a little machine here. All right, I think we got everything configured the way we want. So I went ahead and put a disk in the in the server, and so it's in the physical machine itself. And I'm going to click on Windows 7, and I'm going to go ahead and power it on. And we'll see if it actually pulls the ISO from the disk that we have in the server. There it goes. So it's taken off. So here we're going to load Windows 7 64-bit. All right, here we go. So you want to treat this just as if you were treating any uh, or any uh, install. So you'd go through all the same steps. And it's pretty basic, so you do no different than what you would normally do. It's just in a virtual machine. Uh, one quick step, if you want to get out of your virtual machine, it's Control-Alt at the same time, and that allows you to get all out of it. And then to get back in, you just click the screen, and you're back in it. So we'll go ahead and accept. Next. Custom install. This is our 32 gigabyte hard drive there. And the install is going. All right now to the part where it asks to give it a name. So we'll just call it test computer. Click next. And no password. We're not gonna stick in a product key. We'll use recommended settings. Uh, that's good. Work. And it's finalizing. All right, looks like everything's working good. Now, as soon as this is done and we get in here, we'll go ahead and give it an IP address that's in our uh, domain so we can access it actually from our Windows 8 machine. So now that we're in, let's let it finish booting up here. Uh, 192.168.0.121. Oh, what's happening? Alright. 192.168.0.121. It's good. Live DNS 192.168. All right, click OK.
And there we go. All right, so now we should be able to go ahead and we'll just minimize this. And we could open up a remote desktop session straight to the new computer. Oh, one more thing we got to look at here. Let's go to Start. Right click on Computer here. Properties. Remote Settings. Allow Remote. All right. Ah, one more thing we do have to configure. We do, for remote connection, we do have to give it a password. So we're going to head and go ahead and change the administrative account. And the new password is test. Create password. Now, as soon as this is done, we'll minimize this again. And we will go ahead and open up a remote connection. Two one nine two nine one twenty one. All right, seems to have found it. And here we are. We have remoted into our brand new Windows Seven machine. Pretty nifty. All right, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to contact me here at YouTube, or you can contact me at uh, gotechleverage.com. All right, thank you.